Welcome back. This is your host, Danita, and we got Coach Daisy here. Excited to have her back on the podcast. I know you guys love her and all the content. I hear so many great things about Daisy. I know, I know, I know. That's why I make sure that she's around me all the time, 24-7, okay? Um, she's also become one of my really good friends as well. And now I have vacations with her. Oh my gosh, I just am surrounding myself with this beautiful woman that's so full of courageousness, bravery, you name it. The self-love warrior truly is Coach Daisy. Um, and today's topic is all about really learning how to handle our emotions because nobody ever taught us like nowhere in school. Like, where did we learn how to handle our emotions? And then as moms, how do we teach our kids to handle their emotions if we don't know how to handle our own? Booty bands and barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one on one coaching. So I don't know if it's like uh, for, for me, it's like really think about how we handle our emotions and Do Daisy, feel free to jump in here. Um, but like, I remember just thinking of suppressing sadness, like, oh, don't cry because then you're marked as like weak and sad. Like, what are some other things that you think like people really just don't know how to handle their emotions? Oh, just think about all the things we were told when we were little girls, you know, I know um, some of the things my mom used to tell me, which I'm sure my grandma used to tell her was like, put on your big girl panties or, you know, big girls don't cry or rub dirt in it, you know, when you actually were bleeding, just rub dirt in it, you know, and so all of those things kind of set those psychological markers from a really young age that, hey, this isn't something, this isn't natural. This isn't something I'm supposed to feel. This is something that I need to, uh, what was the thing um, I used to get told to put it in a little box and lock it away and just kind of leave it there, right? And so, yes. <laughs> so yeah, those were, that was how I was taught to cope. <laughs> oh my gosh. And, and coping, coping is such a good word, you guys, because um, as we have these amazing, beautiful members come into the program, what we see is quite a bit of coping as we'll go through. Or initially, I had um, I had a woman come through and she was rating herself on her one to 10 scale. We do this like really cool way of the perfect trifecta of learning like mindset, nutrition and workouts. And in her mindset, she was like 10, 10, 10, 10. And then like halfway through the program, she's like, OK, I need to be really honest with you. They're actually threes. And I was like, honey, I already knew it's called coping. I get it. It's okay. It's, it's safe. And I, I just wrote the answers down, but I'm holding your hand through this process. So interesting that you said, yeah, the, the lock key box, just lock it in your mind and then just shove it away for later. Oh my gosh. I remember that one, Daisy. Thanks for that. Okay. So my other one I have is that I've been learning a lot about fear versus love. And as soon as I read the difference between fear versus love vibration, I was like, oh no, fear is bad. Hurry up and suppress it, push it away and just quickly go to love. And so if anybody in my life was experiencing fear, I was like, oh, fear is so bad. It's going to, it's going to be the biggest issue. Hurry up and just lock it away and quickly move to love. And I thought I was doing them and myself a service by getting rid of this, but Ultimately, for me, what I realized, holy crap, was I not processing anything and allowing any of my members to process <laughs> like what fear is a, a very important primitive emotion to listen to is really what it is. Yeah, absolutely. Fear is a marker, right? It, it protects you. It, it gives you, hey, this is the unknown. This is let's be cautious moving into this. Right. So fear can be a good thing, um, but it can also limit you. Right. Yeah. So that we get into those self-limiting beliefs and everything that was placed into us just from childhood, right? Same thing with emotions. A lot of people, especially me growing up, I was afraid of emotions. I didn't know how to process them. And so when they came up, um, a lot of times it would turn to anger because I didn't know, I didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. And what I also learned is, yeah, when the emotions are not received and we're not listening to them, that's when they're stuck indefinitely. That's when they're mentally generated. That's when we're just trying to be safe and small with these emotions. Um, but really, when we are supposed to get these beautiful emotions, imagine like an emotion, you guys, as a signal your body's trying to give you, like if you have to go to the bathroom. Fear is basically like alerting you of danger or to like let go of a limiting belief. Or look at something different. Like there's this whole realization of fear now that I'm like, oh, it's a message. Well, how am I supposed to receive this? I go journal write and we have this little program that's um, in the, we have a section in the one-on-one -on -one accountability that we'll read through the whole fear document. There was some questions at the end and we go towards it. 
we dissect it to understand, okay, what is this telling me? And then when we receive it, it goes back to love. It goes what it needs to. It's like, basically, then you go to the bathroom and now you feel good. You don't feel like you have a full bladder anymore. Same, same. It's funny that you mentioned the guide even because I <laughs> I actually had an, an event come up this weekend where I actually did. I had to turn to the guide and I had to, you know, kind of check myself, you know, because I was feeling an emotion that I wasn't, I wasn't really sure where it was coming from. Where was all this rage coming from? And so turning back to the anger, you know, guide actually kind of helped me tune in and kind of go through my own loop and figure out where it was coming from and kind of try and help heal that part of me so it you know that's the that's the beauty of it is like we're continuously growing as coaches it's not just clients it's helping us too daily oh it's beautiful it's it's made me go to a whole nother level because I know I have to I know I have to give these women the best of the best and so it's like it, made, it propels me and what's beautiful is you and I work together so you're you're teaching me things I'm teaching you things and it's so awesome to have hand in hand a level of I call it sisterhood, where being able to not just have friendship that's surface, that's all full of drama and gossip, but a different type of bonding with women where it's let's empower each other. Yeah. And it's such a different experience from anything, you know, and I think that's what we're creating with our clients as well is that sisterhood, you know, I'm friends with most of them. <laughs> it's awesome. It's so cool. It's, it's been the most rewarding experience for sure. But interesting, what we also find in the program is when we do have these massive breakthroughs with these women is sadness will come up, tears. And the tears, what women have, that have either been emotionally abused or mentally abused in their life, they actually really try to hold back those tears because it wasn't safe to feel. And so they're, hold, they're holding them back, they're suppressing. And we're like, no, it's okay. You're safe to feel. And they're over here like, well, oh, and it's this weird shift that now they allow themselves to cry. And when they allow themselves to cry, listen to this, you guys, one of the emotions we go through is sadness and tears should be a beautiful feeling of completion, release and letting go to love. So like, as we have these amazing breakthroughs and tears start to come up, I get excited as a coach. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's like the, that's like the rain and the rainbows are coming next. Like, this is so beautiful. Let it out. Cry. You're safe. Feel that emotion. And they're just like, they're caught in this, like, oh man, I got to hold back. Cause I've never been taught to cry or understand it. it. It was almost taught you were shamed for crying. You were shamed for showing emotion any type of emotion, right? And um, another way that, you know, um, people like to cope with emotion is suppressing it um, with drugs or alcohol. I know that was something that was shown to me when I was a kid growing up. You know, my dad was an incredible alcoholic and it was because he had such a high stress job. Um, he had a lot of stress on him for being the head of the household, being responsible for bills. You know, I get it as an adult, but the way he reacted, and the way he handled it was probably not in the healthiest way. Yeah, I appreciate you bringing that up because I I think oftentimes that's what we end up looking at is what are the per, what's the person doing, and we see suppression with shopping, with alcohol, drugs, sex. I see food as either overeating or undereating as a way of suppression. Uh, we also see sleeping television watching, book reading. I mean, the literally the list goes on as far as the actions that people do. And it really stems a lot deeper and they just don't know how to process. And that's really led to a big issue in our community and our families in the world is because we don't know how to process these really beautiful, powerful, primitive emotions. And I love what you said, uh, Daisy, you brought this up. You said, when we suppress, it's dis- ease tell me tell me a little bit what you were saying there oh so when we when we suppress our emotions we'll create dis-ease in the body you know which directly translates to disease you know if you are constantly under a state of high stress um, then you're constantly overproducing cortisol which we know is damaging to our circulatory system it's damaging to our cardiovascular system it's damaging to your mental health it's damaging to so many different systems within our bodies that actually need to work together to keep us our healthiest self that things just start compounding the more and more we keep things in 
Yeah. And uh, we used chat GPT the other day to kind of look up some of these really interesting emotional suppressions and how it actually relates to our physical health and how there is direct correlation to disease and that there's there's studies that are out there that prove this, that the, the stress, the immune functioning, cardiovascular, mental health, behavioral, social isolation, the uh, all these emotions manifesting physical symptoms within the body, you guys, it's it's, it's not something that's just woo woo. Now it's facts. It's facts that if you're suppressing these emotions, you're going to be experiencing some big issues coming up in life, whether that's forms of cancer, forms of diabetes. I mean, you name it, it's just suppression. And so what we really want to go into today is how we can break through of those. So there's really only two options when we have an emotion, it's either suppress it, suppress it, or go through it and, and listen to it. And so, um, Daisy, if you can kind of share me a story that's, I mean, personal to you, um, or I can also, I want to share some too about just like when you've had those places that you've wanted to numb, um, what did you do? And, and then, yeah, tell me, tell me some stories that you got. Yeah. So for me, I mean, if anyone's listened to my story, you know, my vice used to be alcohol. Um, I would turn to alcohol for any little problem I had, you know, oh, a mosquito bit me better drink beer. You know what I mean? Just any little tiny stress <laughs> I'm going to drink. And that was kind of just my excuse. And what I was doing instead of releasing these emotions that I was having, even the little things, I was just suppressing them and I kept pushing them down into this bucket, right? Just keep pushing them down into the bucket, pushing them down into the bucket until eventually one day that bucket was way too full and that sucker exploded okay and it was not pretty for anyone near me anyone involved right and so it was that day where I really realized that there had to be something different and so now what I do instead of suppressing my emotions I like to put my emotions into a really heavy lift um I'll go out into my garage and I'll load up my deadlift and it'll typically be a deadlift just because that's the lift where I feel the most powerful. Cause when I'm in those emotions and I'm deep in it and I'm experiencing anger, maybe even sometimes rage, if there's a boundary that hasn't been set or firmly respected, you know, and I'm feeling that inner turmoil, the only way to get it out for me is some heavy heavy lifting and just focusing everything into my lift. Let me tell you what, I've gotten some great PRs off of those rage lifts. <laughs> Safely, of course, my friends, form first. <laughs> Absolutely. And what, I, I mean, it is a form of release. Like if it was walking or swimming or dancing or whatever you name it, it is a form of release. And if we don't release, I mean, that, like you said, it gets bottled up and then it's a volcano eruption. And wow, I think we all have been there, right? So um, I, I had my uh, fiance the other day was experiencing a lot of anger. And um, I know that anger is because a boundary hasn't been set or, you know, there's different things, but we have little templates to kind of guide you down the different emotions. And the old me would have been like, oh, honey, don't feel anger. Let's hurry up and turn to love, you know, like just try to hurry up and like move past it. But now I'm like, no, you need to work through this emotion. So one of the first things I do is just move the energy. I placed like a bunch of like pillows and blankets at the edge of my bed. And I turned on his favorite band, which is Rage Against the Machine. He loved it when he was a teenager. So I literally just put it on a Bluetooth speaker and just like literally just had him just sitting there, punch those pillows and just like get it out. And then after he got it out, I was like, all right, now let's sit down and let's talk about like what is coming up for you. And let's journal write it. Let's express what is happening. Or what are some boundaries you need to set in your life? Or what are some different perspectives we need to see? Or what are some limiting beliefs we need to get rid of? And it was, I mean, it's just been breakthroughs after breakthroughs. It's been so fascinating to um, witness that. And also it gives me that as a coach, it's like, okay, I got to do the same thing with myself. All right, now I'm going to, if I'm feeling anger, I got to go in there and do that. So um, the, the three emotions that we really help people through is sadness, fear, and anger because everything else kind of is a subset from those. Um, but those really give us the good kind of grasp as far as what's going on. And it's helpful. So, um, so thanks for sharing yours, Daisy. That's really helpful and appreciate that. Cause I, I definitely know when she, <laughs> she's hitting her PR days or something going on. I'm like, I love it. It's, she puts it in a good direction. Especially when I shouldn't be maxing that week. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I love it. And so, um, 
just being able to learn how to release. And also I think what's so important is being able, if you, if you don't have kids, then utilize it with your significant other. And if you do have kids, what a great, wonderful way for your kids to get raised. And they're like, oh, my mom taught me how to deal with my anger correctly. Because otherwise what's happening is they're going to be putting it in school. And the next thing you know, your kid's expelled and you're like, what's going on, right? So it's really important to be able to learn this ourselves, to implement it ourselves, and then be an example so we can show our kids how to show up for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. Yeah. So I just wanted to kind of, I think it's, you know, I really appreciate Daisy, you bringing this topic to the forefront. She, I love when she's like, you know, we should have a podcast about this. I'm like, you know, you're right. There's so many <laughs> awesome topics that we, we go through on a daily basis with our members and uh, we'll jump on here more and do more of those with you guys. Um, a few that you can kind of look forward to is a lot of members are thinking that they are just needing to do a bunch of crunches to get to their small waist. When in reality, we're showing them, actually, if you lift a heavy, heavy leg day, that will actually get a smaller waist. And we go into like the proof and the science about how that actually works. And so I think it's fun podcasts like that of taking like the norm of what we've been taught or those beliefs or those things that we've just been conditioned with and being able to set ourselves up for success because truly this world's our oyster. The goals are our oyster. We should feel unlimited. We should feel unstoppable. And if we don't feel that way, we're stuck in something that's not yours. So let's break free of that and get you to where you really need to be. That's it. I absolutely love it. I love it. Awesome. Um, and if, anything that you want to shout out, maybe it's like some of the members that you have in the accountability or Facebook. What, how, is there anything you'd like to say to some of the women that might be listening right now? I absolutely do want to shout one of our beautiful members out. Um, and that's going to be Michelle. Michelle has touched my heart this past couple of weeks. Um, she's gone through a lot of trials and tribulations, even just with her membership and the program and just trying to go, go going through credit card fraud and just dealing with, you know, then she ended up getting COVID. And um, I had a call with her last week and one of her comments was, you know, even um, just trying to build all these healthy habits. I'm not there yet, but I'm on my way. And just to hear that from Michelle and to see the results that she's getting, even with all the trials that she's gone through, I'm getting goosebumps right now. I'm just thinking about it. And um, just seeing her progress, even with all the trials that she's gone through has been so inspiring, not just to me, but I know it's been inspiring to you, Danita. And I really just believe she needs to hear that. I, I just, I believe she needs to hear how incredibly inspiring she is, not just to us, but how inspiring it's going to be to other women just to see that, yeah, it is possible. No matter what happens in our life, you can still put yourself first. And that's what she did. So Michelle, so freaking proud of you. So proud of you. So proud of you. Absolutely. And a huge shout out to those members that are putting themselves as a priority. It's so hard to go through life of thinking you're not enough, you're not worthy, you're not deserving, and then sign up for a program to trust coaches to tell it to think that they can get you there kudos for you guys for giving us that and and honestly just it is it is my honor to be your coach it's our honor to watch your transformation it's an honor to observe your beauty just coming through and shining forward and just thank you so much for for letting us be a part of that that is what we know we were gifted to bring to this world is to bring you closer to yourselves. And thank you for trusting in us. So um, if you would like to jump on a call with a coach and see if you're a good fit, go ahead and just click the link below to see if that is a good fit for you. But um, I just wanted to say again, huge shout out to all the members that are in there. The work that you guys are doing does not go unnoticed. Every little bit is showing yourself that true love. So thanks so much. You guys have an awesome rest of your day and we'll connect with you guys next week. Bye all. So I have really never stuck with anything for more than six months until I found Booty Bands Barbells. It's life-changing. The progress over perfection mindset has been so life-changing. You have self-love and to have self-worth. I just do the 10 minutes and I'm already reaping the benefits. The workouts are fun and that they're effective. I have seen great results that I never thought I'd ever see. I love it because I'm keeping the weight off. We help hold each other accountable and stay committed to our goals. 
to booty bands and barbells has really changed my life for the better. I have to be real with you. The past six months really took a toll on me and my body. I felt incredibly stressed, isolated. After being a good 12 to 13 pounds heavier, I said, that's it, I'm gonna make healthy choices. And I'm happy to tell you today that I am actually down 15 pounds. I feel amazing. I feel like I lost fat and put on muscle. I have a lot more energy. So it's never too late to start. You can take control again. Thanks, Booty Band Nation. Positive that you will get more sculpted, more toned, and you're gonna love those new healthy changes and our community and our coaches. From where you're at, no matter where you are, or how long you've been in the position. So just click the button below to book the call with our team.